What's up guys, thanks for checking out round two of my kayak bass bracket tournament, uh, online tournament that I entered. As I said in my first round one video, I'm not a big fan of online tournaments, but I, but I signed up for this one just to see what it was all about. It was pretty fun in week one. Of course it was more fun because I won my matchup, but uh, had a tough matchup this week. I went back to the, to the well one too many times, as, as you might say, when uh, things don't go your way, but you can still learn from a day on the water, even if they don't work out the way you want them to. Uh, it was a fun day, so check out the footage I caught. I cut it down to just a few minutes, so uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch this. All right, so I started off down at the hot water discharge where I kind of went midday last time, tied on a jerk bait, and kind of went to work with it. I was hoping there would be fish here post-spawn as they were kind of at the tail end of the spawn, I guess, last weekend with fry garters on a few beds and, and some beds in the back box. But the big fish were gone, so I was hoping they would be down here uh, feeding back up on shad now that the current was generating again. But... There were fish here, but as you're going to see, they were just, they, were, they weren't the right ones. Uh, went from a jerk bait to just a bottom bouncing bait, just dragging a Carolina rig uh, through some of these rocky areas around the current seams. And it was little fish after little fish after little fish. That one spit up a little shad. Uh, I threw some individual swim baits about that size, tied on an A-rig, as you'll see later, about with some shad bait, shad imitation baits about that size. Uh, but the big fish never would show up. I caught plenty of fish uh, throughout the day. I just kind of was stubborn, stayed down here too long, kept trying to, to wait them out and, and wait for the bigger fish to move in here. Because in the past, you know, you, you fish here half a day, and then all of a sudden the, the bigs will move up and start feeding, and, and you'll be all right. But, you know, that's just one of those deals of fishing on history. You cannot do that, uh, especially in a tournament setting. You have to recognize what's going on, adjust, and, you know, move on and, and you know make another make another sometimes just a guess or best guess use your instincts to figure out what's going on uh another carolina rig fish here just dragging in the in the same rocks that i was fishing earlier just a different direction this time throwing from the bank out but no matter what i did it seems like i could not upsize the, the catch they were all in the 10 to, to 13 inch really, uh 10 to 13 all in the 10 to 13 inch range which is not going to get it done uh, pulled out the A-Rig, like I said, with the, the fluke, swimming fluke juniors on there that kind of imitate the size of that, that fish I caught, thinking, well, maybe if I drug a big school of fish in front of a bigger one that's laying down there, uh, I could entice them to, to bite the big A-Rig rather than just chase the little small individual baits. But didn't work out that way. I kept dragging the, the rig. I went moved into the bank, threw it out, and brought it up you know, from, from deep to shallow to see if that would change things. Caught some fish doing it, and here's one that I caught right here. Uh, once again, same size, just a little little runt bass. Uh, and, I, and I should have not been stubborn. Should have either moved spots on the lake earlier or changed techniques or just loaded up and moved lakes altogether. Because, you know, after the fact, I talked to a few guys uh, that, that fish out there often, and they kind of confirmed what it seemed like, which is the fish were just in a kind of a funny post-spawn funk. Uh, the big fish weren't really feeding. I mean, you could stumble on one here and there, I guess, but it was a far cry from the week before where I really, really smashed them, caught quite a few fish, and they were all pretty good fish. Uh, but, yeah, this day just, it was what it was. I kept catching the, these 10 to 13-inch runts. I ended up catching uh, one that went about 16 inches, uh, which would end up being my big bass of the day. After a week ago on the same lake, 16.75 was my small bass in my limit, in my 91-inch limit. So, uh, yeah, just wasn't to be today. I ended up going back to one of the pockets where I saw him spawning the week before. Saw a few fry garters left. Started flipping a creature bait around some of the laydowns. Uh, ended up catching this one, but it was just another, I think it was a 14 inch or so, you know, it really didn't help things, uh, much, you know, I was able to get a limit, but what's that do when you're in a national tournament, you know, the guy you're going against is, uh, one of the hammers, but it, it just doesn't work out for me today. Uh, I ended up with a limit in the high sixties. My opponent was, was, was way up there. When I checked the standings around till noon, one o'clock, he was in the mid eighties. I think he finished with 88 and I finished with with uh, 68 point something. I'll show the graphic here in just a minute, but it was just a good old fashioned beating. Didn't get it done today. Uh, a lot of that's on me for just making bad decisions. No excuses, just learn and get better next time. But still fun to be out fishing, uh, 10 hour grinder. So, you know, hard to complain about 10 hours of fishing on a beautiful Memorial Day weekend. As you can see the ramp stacked up. These guys will take about 30 minutes to put, the, put that little flat bottom in there. But 
got loaded up and headed home. Uh, had some good food and a cold beer. It was still a fun day. So I appreciate y'all watching. I'll try to get another video out here in about a week or so.